And my burrito is ready. <laughs> mm. Today we are falling into Simpsons number seven. What type of medical scenes and injuries are we gonna see on our favorite animated show today? I don't know, let's dive right in. Oh, I'm hit! Wait a second, where'd it get hit? Where'd it get in? I didn't see it, I didn't see it. Right in the heart of your <laughs> The biggest thing you think of a buttocks injury is actually a vascular injury near the hip. So you have your femoral vein, femoral artery. And the other thing we think about is your butthole. It's a very complex muscular system down there and you wanna be pooping right the rest of your life. Someone's gotta suck out the bullet. <laughs> If you get a bullet wound and it's deep in the tissue, most of the time the trauma surgeon's just gonna leave it in there. There potentially is further poisoning down the line. There could be a lot more complications relating to getting the bullet out, especially in that acute setting. This is what you were born to do. <laughs> Don't do that, it's disgusting. You got all these bloodborne pathogens that you have to worry about. There's no barrier. What are you doing? Like siphoning it out of there? There he is. You have Beef here to thank. His quick suction may have saved your life. <laughs> oh, that's so disgusting. No. The only time you medically put something in your mouth, if your tooth falls out and you don't have the perfect Hank balance salt solution or a glass of milk to put the tooth in, you can just put it back in your mouth and hold on to it. Don't keep a bullet just chilling there. That's disgusting. I'm buying you the most important gift a man your age can get. You're getting a colonoscopy. Oh, nice. Very nice. Pardon me for a moment. Colonoscopy is an endoscopic examination of the large- Nice! Good, good, good. Colonoscopy is an endoscopic exam examining the large intestine or the colon. One of the very few things that we can do as a preventative measure to catch colon cancer fast. Welcome to the Mayo Clinic. Mm, Mayo. The Mayo Clinic is a fancy hospital system in the United States. Kind of gold standard for a big university system. Early detection can lead to complete removal of tumorous polyps and- Are we gonna talk or make a movie? The beginning screening process is age 50. If you have any family history of colon cancer or risk, you typically start a little bit earlier. Now, Homer, breathe into this mask. <laughs> Most of the time when you're actually doing colonoscopies or EGDs or upper endoscopies, you're actually using medications. Will he be all right, doctor? Listen, don't worry. I've done hundreds of these and good Lord. This <laughs> is why I became a doctor. <laughs> Doctors have gotten in trouble. There was a case with a gastroenterologist where they were talking about the patient when they were on the table and the patient wasn't out and they remember everything. This is my Sistine Chapel. This is my Moby Dick. This is my Sergeant Peppers. How did that get in there? <laughs> we do get very excited about anatomy, what we're doing. We geek out, we're nerds. Nerd! You want nerds to be your doctors because they're passionate about what they do. According to this, he has three active polyps. Now comes the fun part. He cut them out? Oh, we don't use that term. We prefer rip. No, we don't rip them out. They actually have some really cool attachments that go through that long camera. I feel great. Let's take this new colon out for a spin to Krusty Burger. Oh, hold on, I missed your sensor. Oh. The camera's still inside you. <laughs> The camera of a colonoscopy is definitely smaller than a poop. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just uncomfortable. Nice! That means you're terrible! Look at that. We're missing the superior and inferior vena cava, but it looks pretty good. <laughs> oh, the heart is yelling at him. He must have ate something unhealthy. Oh! That's a very good description of possibly having a heart attack. Mr. Burns, I think he's dead. Yo! Not even a myocardial infarction, cardiopulmonary arrest, where he's dead. His soul is leaving the body. Literally, the heart stopped. Send a ham to his widow. Mmm, ham. No, wait. He's alive. There are so many common stories where people see the light, hear a voice, hear music or something, and then they come back. Sometimes that's actually called Lazarus syndrome, where you're raised from the dead. It actually is a medical term. Look at that bicycle injury with his beard. I've actually seen cases where people get their beards or hair caught in machinery. Doesn't need to be in the hospital for this. He could just have his beard cut out or one of his buddies. Oh, <laughs> you're trying to break a piece of wood with his hand, his hand got stuck. If you're there for a fracture, cool. If you're there just to have it removed, like have your buddy just remove it. I'm telling you, it's not going to work. 
See? You cannot walk into the emergency department with an explosive device, a weapon, anything like that. If you're found with one, we take it away. He was taking a bite in his jaw lock. Oh, very common. A jaw dislocation occurs often. The jaw joint is actually like a horseshoe. Sometimes if you open your jaw too much, it actually can slide forward or back. Hey, look, I can fit my entire fist in here. Ow, ow, ow. Wow. Don't do that. You're gonna lose your hand. You can lose your fingers when people have that amount of force. They don't know what they're doing. It could be a reflex. <laughs> On the monitor, it shows asystole. It is a non-shockable rhythm. We don't use those old school paddles anymore. We actually use little pads. You shock, then do CPR. Then after two minutes, you check to see if there's a rhythm back. <laughs> More. <laughs> Sometimes somebody will be in refractory ventricular fibrillation and you can actually use two machines and you shock somebody with double the dose. Mr. Simpson, I'm afraid you've just had a mild heart attack. Oh my gosh. So yes, you can have a mild heart attack, which can cause a cardiac arrest. Someone died. There's a reason why they died. We have to figure out what the reason is. We just brought them back to whatever it was. Hopefully it buys us enough time to then find the underlying cause of the issue. Put him out of the woods now, right? I mean, whatever doesn't kill me can only make me stronger. Oh, no. Nice. I do like that quote, but not when it comes to something that's reversible. Medically wise, cardiovascular disease will eventually kill you. It's made you weak as a kitten. <laughs> Look. <laughs> never, never would that ever happen that a doctor slaps a patient in the face. Calabunga, dude. That would definitely kill you from that height. Your brains would be squashed everywhere. You might have a hematoma in this show. You have a big blood clot under the skin. People describe them as like golf balls under your skin. In real life, you'd be dead. We've done all we could. Run! Beat it! Call 911, peeps. And my burrito is ready. <laughs> mm. Nope. OSHA has some rules about eating food around patient patient care. Can't do that. Why would you do such a stupid, stupid thing? March, March. As someone who's fallen off a cliff multiple times, the best thing we can do is teach him how to fall off cliffs. <laughs> Bart just sitting on the hospital bed. He might be in the acute care setting where he's actually not on cardiac monitor because he's doing well. Typically, he probably would have had a CT scan of the head, neck, face, probably the whole body with that type of fall. Most likely would have had some sort of pretty bad intracranial injuries. This was really good. I love The Simpsons. If you guys like this episode, I love The Simpsons. Definitely check out this whole series of The Simpsons right here. And as always, hit that subscribe button, turn those bell notifications on, and please hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.